that type of injector that I'm going to I'm going to turn you away. Not <laughs> You're not Dr. Do Miami. No, I'm not going to do <laughs> that. Like I, I I don't I don't because at the end of the day, you're walking around with my work. And mm, so very true. you're my billboard basically. Very true. So I can't do something like that in, in a good conscience your skin might start drooping and there's things that we can do to enhance it there's fillers we can do in your cheeks your your laugh lines things like that to just make you look a little bit more youthful but keep your original fake basically is a fat graft basically like you explained where you take fat from one part of your body they accepting klarna and after no, pay for bbl no that's yes. crazy that I is crazy like, no after pay for but it's crazy girl i said wait a minute what's good y'all we are back again with another episode of the young and dumb show and I like this episode because this episode is going to be real different for me. Um, I usually sit down with people where I know about the industry. I know a little son and I know a little something, a little something. But today I'm sitting down with Miss Rondell, your spa coach, your spa everything, and also doctor as well, right? So we got to <laughs> put some respect on the name, right? So how are you today? I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you, right? So let's get into this. Let's get into this. We're going to talk about a lot of different things. I want to talk about uh, the spa industry. also want to talk about like your personal journey to developing, having two spas, mm -hmm. right? Like what does that look like? Um, and we're just going to get into it. So first, we want to talk about like who's Rondell? Wow, who is Rondell? <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's ever evolving, though, mm -hmm. like, you know, and I think that's important to recognize, too, because the Rondell that I am today isn't the Rondell I was six months ago or a mm. year ago, and it's not going to be the Rondell I am a year from now. That's a fact. Right? So, you know, as we grow, we evolve, we change things about us to improve ourselves. So who am I? Mm. I am... Uh, mother i'm a nurse i'm a business owner i'm a friend i'm a mentor i'm many things and i keep adding on new hats all mm. the time <laughs> i don't know how that keeps happening but yeah. um yeah so you know i'm i'm uh i wear many hats these days yes yes so one i wanted to ask like was like in, being in a spa business always something that you had envisioned for yourself you know what's crazy like uh, being in the beauty industry actually kind of like fell into my lap. It wasn't mm. something that I really ever saw myself doing. Mm. Like initially when I start when when I started nursing, I was like a hospital nurse and that's where I thought I would be for the rest of my life. And then, you know, and I, I was comfortable there, you know, mm -hmm. I was making good money and I was like, all right, so this is it. I've, I've arrived. Like mm -hmm. I, I did what I set out to do. I yeah. went to nursing school. I did the stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought that was it. And then I had a friend who was um, who was an esthetician and she would always tell me like, oh, my gosh, if you were in the beauty business, you would kill it. Da, da, da. And I was like, mm, that's that's not really my jam, mm -hmm. though. Like I, I'm like yeah. a hospital nurse. Like I never really saw that for myself and then she convinced me to like take this beauty course with her and i really liked it and mm. i was like huh this i i, I really liked it and it, it like helped me to tap into a side of me like a creative side of me that i guess was dormant all along but it was in there and mm. so um i started with with uh eyelash extensions i started doing that and from there, um, I started doing permanent makeup, like eyebrow tattoos, stuff like that. And before you know it, I was just like going down this rabbit hole of like all these different <laughs> beauty <laughs> courses, like trying to figure out everything. And it was like so amazing because it really like piqued my interest. And that's it's interesting because like as a nurse, there's a lot of stuff to do, like always in different fields. But I always found myself getting like bored after a while, like no matter mm. what specialty I was in, no matter where. I was working at like after a while I'd be like okay been there done that like my brain it was just like I was always on to the next thing yeah. and when I started in aesthetics I felt like wow like I like I finally met my match like because it was like overwhelming almost mm -hmm. like it was just so many things to learn about the field and it continues to grow and continues to evolve so I'm always learning and I feel like I'm like a forever student, you know, with the beauty business now mm -hmm. in the beauty field. And that's been like really amazing. Yes. Wow. <laughs> All right. So one I want to ask you, though, like, so how long have you been in the beauty industry? So 
so far now? I have been in the beauty industry since 20, um, 2020. Since oh, 2020. so that's not, that's recent. Yeah. And you acquired yeah, all huh? of this? Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you, you got some game to get. Yeah. Then. You got some you game know, to get. Yeah. All right. I, I, yeah. In the beginning so, of 2020. And you, you were a nurse still. But yeah. From, from like you getting into the beauty industry and things like that, mm-hmm. you were still doing nursing as like. At first, mm-hmm. at first I was. So when I first opened my spa, I was actually still nursing. Um, I was still doing like nursing. Um, I was working for the state at the time and I had my spa and I was like open on the some weekends and like some evenings. And it was like. I wanted to like I wanted to do more but then I was scared and then I I was like holding on to that income from my job you know and that was like in the fall of 2019 and but I was like one foot in one foot out that's why I say 2020 and then in 2020 you know I just had this epiphany and it was like because I was thinking about it and it was like to the point where I couldn't sleep some nights and finally it was like overcoming like I have to do this Mm. and so I woke up one day and I was like yo I, I'm going to quit my job. And I was wow. like, I said it in my head and I was like, then I said it out loud. I was like, yo, I'm going to quit my job. <laughs> and so I did. I quit my job. I was working two full-time nursing jobs and I had my spa on the side. And in my head, I just knew like, if I really wanted to give my business a fair shot, I couldn't be one foot in one foot yeah. out. I had to really commit. And I gave myself six months in the beginning of 2020, like March of 2020, like the end of February, um, I was like, okay, I'm going to give myself six months, quit all my nursing jobs, be completely committed to the shop, see if I can make it grow, do something, start building clientele. And I thought like, okay, if I could do that, I must, I'll must i continue and see my way. But if it's a complete failure, I'll go back to nursing. Mm-hmm. So six months is what I gave myself. And so I was like open, like full time um, in the business, like for all of like, I don't know, maybe like three weeks from like the end of February to like mid-March and then the world shut down for COVID. Wow. Literally. So I was so like, I mean, the emotions, everything, because I had just quit my jobs. Like I had no real income. And then what I thought was going to be my income, the government just said, nah, you got to close. Like you can't be open because, you know, for personal care services, they wouldn't let like anybody like do those kinds of things during covid so it wasn't like no close contact you couldn't do anything so it was a really scary time wow yep so so what did you do during that time like what did what did that look like it it was it was it was scary but it was also beautiful the reason i say that is because it really allowed me to reconnect with like my kids with my family um and really like pause for a minute i feel like a lot of times and maybe especially in new york too like Mm -hmm. we just get so caught up in like the hustle and bustle like we don't really take time to pause or just like stop and when covid happened we all had we were forced to like sit down we couldn't do nothing you know we were just in the house and it really allowed me to like reconnect with my kids and like relearn them because even as a parent like you spend so much time apart from your kids you know like you see them in the morning before they're off to school and then they're in school the whole day then they come home they're doing homework you probably getting dinner ready you know and then they're going to bed so it's not really yeah. a lot of the time. teachers get more yeah. than more than <laughs> yeah. correct you yeah. know and so being with my kids like 24 7 i was like whoa okay <laughs> this is different you know yeah. but it was like a beautiful time to really reconnect with them and you know family and things like that and it allowed me to tap into my creative side too i started making a lot of things that i didn't even know i could make i started making soaps and candles in my spare time and all kinds of stuff and i found it so therapeutic and it was such a fun th- experience even mm-hmm. though it was a scary time it was really good for me mm. so what did you do in that time to like replace your income i was i saw i started making the candles at first i just did it like i took a candle making course and like a soap making course online just because i was bored and then i started making them and i gave them to my family and they liked them a lot and they were like, you should try to sell this. And so I did. I started wow. selling like my candles and my soaps and like making gift baskets for Mother's Day. Like I was just doing like stuff like making things um, during that time while, you know, the shop was closed. 
um and you know i was able to sustain myself and that was really it was interesting because i'd never done anything like that before like e-commerce or like selling stuff online and stuff like that so i had put it up on like facebook marketplace and i had like wow. a little website and stuff that i had built and it was it was good people were like picking up i was delivering i was shipping some stuff it was really really good and then i want to say maybe like august of 2020 we got the okay to reopen and then you, things got exactly back to normal. yeah back to normal. yeah so would you say that was like by far one of the big biggest challenges that you had in your business um no so, no so it was a big one but there's i feel like as an entrepreneur and a business owner there's always like challenges you mm. know there's always challenges um you know like staffing you know is a big one um you know and just like budgeting like a lot of people don't, they don't talk about that kind of stuff you know it's one thing to make the money but like keeping the money is a whole different thing you know and so i had to learn a lot of that too because i didn't understand that like it's still coming from the mindset of like a nine to five situation i was used to having a certain amount of money and like spending that money accordingly but then having an influx of money but also having a bunch of new things to do with that money like pay rent um you know for my for my spot uh pay staff pay insurance pay for supplies pay for all of these things it's like okay well it's just coming in but it's also going out so yeah. like learning how to control the that cash flow. yeah yeah the cash that, flow, yeah. yeah so yeah. so what would you say if i'm a i'm a business owner right not even just spot owner mm -hmm. i'm a business owner how can I develop those skill sets to uh like learn my cash flow like what's some of the things that I need to do be mindful for well what what I had to do for myself and I think it's good for every business owner to do that is really like sit down and write everything out for a very long time I actually did not do that mm, and so like write all of my expenses like write it out on paper so you can yep. see it in your face because exactly. like having expenses out there and stuff on auto pay and stuff like that you don't really realize like how you know, much how you're spending much, yeah, yeah you know but really writing it out and seeing what's coming in and what's coming out that was like the first big step for me and then from there i was like okay this is not my field i need help so you know having somebody like a financial advisor or like a bookkeeper or someone like that to help you know that that was the other big thing that i had to do so who do, who do, you, who do you use for your bookkeeper you have like a, a so i QuickBooks use or? i use a software called um Oh my gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Keeper. Keeper, okay. Keeper. Keeper um, helps. It's like QuickBooks, but it um, basically it just links to your uh, business accounts and on your credit cards too. It don't only have to be bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And it just basically pre-itemizes everything for you. Okay. So, um, you know, between that and then um, my uh, bookkeeper, it's been like, they they've been keeping that under control and it's been helping me a lot <laughs> no i no you know what's so crazy that's literally something that i'm using in my business mm -hmm. and because i teach and i talk about financial mm -hmm. literacy it is really different when you have money coming in from multiple places yes. like as an entrepreneur it it seems like you make money so fast because mm -hmm. like if i provide a service all right that's four hundred dollars right there right if I do this that's a thousand dollars right there like it just come so fast and right. for me i don't have staffing yet mm -hmm. so it's not like i have a direct place for right. the money to go i'm just reinvesting in whatever i feel whatever, like my business exactly. needs and it's just like now at that point i'm just getting stuff you know right, what i'm saying right so it's like really learning how to budget and mm -hmm. especially when you have a business that doesn't have high overhead like right. my business doesn't require mm -hmm. any high overhead so it's like sometimes i have to say i Aaliyah, like right, chill, chill <laughs> out chill. or you know what i'm saying like something as simple as paying taxes mm -hmm. like this would be my first year of me paying business ta wow. taxes and literally i got it in the mail yesterday <laughs> like wow. literally i got in the mail you owe this much money yeah. and i was like oh they got me they got me you I'm know what i'm saying <laughs> and and i always hear entrepreneurs mm -hmm. talk about uh save money for taxes mm -hmm. and just to talk about too like as an entrepreneur you you don't you get taxed last and yes. sometimes that can be really tricky yes. because if I, like i just said if i 
if I do a service mm-hmm. and it's four hundred dollars, I get my four hundred. The whole four hundred dollars. I get my four hundred dollars exactly. versus if I'm an employee and I know I just work four hundred dollars worth of hours. I already know in my check I'm only gonna get probably like three twenty six exactly, or whatever because taxes, taxes are taken out. Mm-hmm. But as an entrepreneur, you have to take a portion of that four hundred dollars yes. and save it to taxes because yes. at the end of the year they, come they gonna in. come they and come. tell you you owe this much. <laughs> yes. And the more money you make. Yep. the more money you owe period and like you just gotta be mindful of that right yeah. so how how have you like been dealing with like taxes and like things like that like do you save like i do so i, I and i didn't at first mm-hmm. and like you when i the first year i did my business taxes like the first year when i really started generating a good amount of income and i got that statement they were like you owed it i was like oh lord wait a minute <laughs> hold on you know it like took me back i i, I was like wow how am i gonna do this and so now i have a, a separate account mm-hmm. that i um do use just uh for tax purposes yeah, like i put money into that every um sometimes i do it weekly well it's, it's on auto uh, auto situation yeah. right now but it's just set aside yeah and i'd rather have extra in that account to make yeah. sure i can cover my taxes so i yeah. don't have to come out out of pocket whatever i don't use then like you i either reinvest it or i put it back into the main account or something like that but Makes sense. it's important you yeah, have to super, have that super important, mm-hmm. super important. yeah All right um so the challenge what was what would you say is your biggest business challenge Huh. You know, I think for me, it's like dividing myself equally. Like, and I know that may sound like not a big challenge, but what's good, y'all? Are y'all having a hard time starting conversations in large rooms? Do you need to find more effective ways to draw attention to yourself without wearing a fancy outfit? I figured out a hack. You need some Financial Revolution merch. Everything is a staple piece that represents black wealth. You are what you wear, so make sure you join the rest of the billionaires and get some FR merch. We have hoodies, sweatsuits, t-shirts, and much more. Make sure you visit www.financialrevolution.com and use code PODCAST for a special 10% off. Again, go to www.financialrevolution.com and use code PODCAST for a special 10% off. Let's get it, y'all. But it has been the hardest thing for me because as an entrepreneur, like literally you work 24 hours Mm. every other job i've ever worked at eventually i'm off the clock yeah and i can actually get to like completely detach from work and that's it as an entrepreneur like especially when you own a business when you have staff even if you're on vacation even if you're away stuff come up you got to take them calls you're never really off 100 percent. you know if you want to be off exactly because your mind start racing (laughs) yeah exactly so you can't even let your mind rest in order to be off like even if you want to even if you force yourself to take off a day you're still thinking about stuff and that has been really hard for me like uh that separation uh and i still haven't fully conquered it yet and it really it takes a toll. It takes a toll out on me. It takes a toll out on my family, you know, because like that has consumed me in a yeah. sense, you know, but it's like, it's my job now. It's my yeah. livelihood too. So I have to make sure it's functioning properly. Mm-hmm. So that's been a very, very big challenge for me. Um, and yeah, it's a work in progress. So how did you know like entrepreneurship was for you? Because I feel like for a lot of people, right, they can't deal with the mental stress of, like, owning a business. They can't deal with the mental stress of you can't walk away from your business. Mm -hmm. They can't. So how did you know that, like, you know what, this is for me? So my grandmother was an entrepreneur also, like, not in, like, a formal way, but she always had like side hustles like she always she wasn't like a very educated woman but she always had businesses and she always made things with her hands either she was cooking and selling stuff or you know making things and selling it so she i and growing up seeing her do that it kind of instilled that in me but it wasn't until i was an adult where i was like okay I want to have a business of my own. But even when I did decide that I wanted to have a business of my own, I was already a nurse and um, I thought it was going to be a different kind of business, like something in the medical field, like nursing, like a home care agency or something. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the laws in New York are just insane for that kind of stuff. And that Mm kind of deterred me for a while and was like, "Mm, I can't do this. And then what really um, was like an eye opener, like, okay, it's time to do it now was when um, my middle sister was killed back in 2017. Mm. Um, It really showed me like, 
I don't have the time I thought I had, you know, mm. like, I, and for years I would be like, okay, I'm going to start my business. And I kept putting it off and I'm like, okay, I need to save more. I need to study more, you know, in this skill I need to do. And, and then just putting it off, putting it off. And then when I lost her, I realized like, we do not have the time we yeah, think we real. have. Yeah. And that kind of lit a fire under me to really just like push all of my doubts aside. And it's like, okay, you know, um, finish is better than perfect like maybe my business plan wasn't what it needed to be i probably could have spent some more time doing that and rolling that part out properly but it was like nope i gotta do this now and it's now started. or never exactly. exactly and that's that's where yeah. you know that that's pretty much where i was at between that and also the fact that i'm not a quitter so mm. it's like i wouldn't let myself give up on like once I devoted myself to it and I was like I'm doing this it was like okay you got to see this through like yeah. I'm not about to just like walk away and be like okay it didn't you know like I was like mm, no we gotta we gotta figure out a way yeah. that's just because it's that's how my brain works so did you have like anyone supporting you when you was first starting your business like what like you know what it's like some people did, mm -hmm. but a lot of people who I thought would support me, like very important people in my life, thought I was crazy. Mm. They were like, so you really leaving like nursing and the money that you're making and the lifestyle that you have for this? Like they mm. wouldn't they didn't understand it and i didn't even understand it a lot of the time but i was like this is what i'm doing this is what i want to do and um you know uh for the day one supporters who always support me and still do like i definitely love them to death and for the people who didn't support me initially they came around too because they saw like okay like sometimes you really, gotta make them see it yeah. you gotta make them believe it yes and now they are yeah. like m some of my number one like supporters my number one yeah. spokespeople they'll be telling yeah. everybody about me and i'm like wow okay yeah. they was just trying to protect you what they thought yes they was they was protecting yes. you you know and i i had to learn that too because i actually for a long time in my business when i first started i resented them mm. and it caused a rift in our relationship because i felt like they didn't want me to succeed and then you know it took me some time to understand that, that that was just their way of protecting me. My mom actually is, was one of my, you know, doubters in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And she could not, like, she thought I was, like, going through a midlife crisis. She thought I was having, like, a <laughs> mental break. She was, like, she was, like, calling her pastor and stuff to talk to me. <laughs> and I was, like, Ma, I'm good. good. Like, like, I want, I just, just want to shift. Yes. Like, I, I want to pivot. Need it. Exactly. Yeah. And she could not wrap her head around it. And she just wouldn't take it seriously and you know it really hurt me and then it took a lot to really understand that she was just coming from a place of love mm. and once i understood that i kind of you know it, things improved in our relationship and now you know like i said she's one of my biggest supporters she tell everybody oh my daughter does botox my daughter do this <laughs> you should go to her shop you should be, she'll do this for you and she does facials and blah 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 and i'm yeah. like wow you know but that's that's something yeah. that I had to like overcome and it was very hard in the beginning. Wow. So all right, so on this show we speak to a lot of young people. Mm hmm What was the name? Young and Dumb, right? Right. So I know a lot of people, a lot of young people right now who wanna start something, mm -hmm. have ideas, they may want to go to college, they may want to do just anything yeah. that their family didn't do. Mm hmm And nobody around them believes in them. Or may they may have mm -hmm. their mom or their dad who's right. just doubting them. What would you tell them? Like what would you tell your your younger self or mm -hmm. yourself like when you were going through it? Right. You know, because now that you're out of mm -hmm. it, it's like you can reflect. Right. You know, but what what did you feel like you needed to hear in that moment? I think I would tell them, you know, you have to believe in it first, and you almost have to have like a tunnel vision. There are going to be people who are not going to support you, and you can't worry about those people. You just have to stay focused and if this is what you're meant to do, you're going to do it with or without their support. Of course, their support is going to be helpful, but you can't dwell on that and use that as a t deterrent to hold you back. Like if you're going to do it, do it and then show them and make them a believer. Like if they see your consistency and if, cause sometimes people say things all the time, like, Oh, I'm going to start even my son. He's been like for the last year and a half, he want to be an entrepreneur, but he don't really want to do the work. And I keep explaining to him like, son, it's not as easy 
easy as you think. Like yeah. he want to do start a t-shirt line. So I gave him like the information like, okay, you can use these places to get the t-shirts, blah, blah, blah. But he don't have that drive in him. And mm. so he keeps stopping and starting. And I told him, I'm like, listen, you have to believe in it first. And you don't even believe in it right now. So you can't make me believe in you when you don't even believe in it yourself. You got to want this more than anything else. Facts. And if you do, people are going to feel it after a while. They, and they're going to recognize it. Whether they want to admit it or not, they're going to see the work. They're going to see what you're doing. And then they're going to come around. Yeah. Now, that's that's it. That's a fact. And I would say, too, like... You know, on the outside looking in, when you want somebody to support you and mm -hmm. you keep starting and stopping, it's just like, I can't start and stop my support. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, I'm a only support, not I'm a only support, but nine times out of ten, people are only really going to support you when they see you really passionate yes, about it. You, exactly. You, when you posting every mm -hmm. day, when you showing mm -hmm. up every day, you always selling them yep. your product. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like people forget that, like, People are not going to just stop their lives yeah. like, for you. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like you, you gotta be realistic. But that was that was good information. But now we're about to get into the spa business, right? We gotta give some game, right? Because okay. I feel like spa, like the beauty industry. I mm -hmm. keep saying spa business. I'm sorry. It's okay. Put some respect on y'all. <laughs> the beauty industry. I feel like the beauty industry is definitely has been like a trillion dollar. I would say trillion billion dollar mm -hmm. industry for years. But yes. I do think now a lot of us are starting to get a portion of that money now, mm -hmm. right? Because we're starting to see, like, where we're placed and our yes. value in that industry, right? So now I want to talk about, like, what are, what are three myths in your industry right now? Three myths. Um, in my industry, I would say, one, that um, nurses can't own med spas. Um, mm, that's I'm a med spa. Of that. So a med spa is a spa, but like um that does more advanced services so like um, more like medical aesthetic stuff so lasers like high power machines injectables things like that mm, so good. regular spas usually do like facials massages things like that body scrubs but med spas do more like medical procedures okay. like you know kind of semi-invasive um procedures uh that require like a higher skill level and mm -hmm. like a more like a medical facility mm -hmm. type of setting so that's one myth you know i got that a lot when i started um and it held me back for a little bit too because i started believing it and imposter syndrome too that's something that really plagued me for a while in the beginning because i really didn't think that i could do a lot of the things that i was trying to do mm. um until i did them then i was like all right so i could do these things so i would say that that nurses can't own med spas also that you know black people don't need botox i get that a lot too mm. i get that a lot okay. too explain botox what is botox? so botox is a neuromodulator and what that means is it's a chemical basically that weakens the muscles in our face that allow us to crease our skin so for instance um in our forehead there's a muscle called the frontalis muscle and it allows us to like lift our brows up and down mm -hmm. and a lot of times when you do that you crease your skin and then you get like wrinkles in in your skin and so for a long time you know the expression good black don't crack and all of that stuff but it does though and so you know we need preventative services too just because we're you know melanated and our skin is preserved for longer it doesn't mean that eventually it doesn't start breaking down too you know so i get that a lot and i've been like actively changing the narrative around mm. what that looks like because you know um aesthetic medicine is for everybody it's not just for you know our caucasian counterparts um you know we y you should be utilizing those treatments as well um also another one is i would say like chemical peels are not for black and brown skin i get that a lot too i got i have a lot of clients who are you know of color and they're scared to death of getting chemical peels because they feel like they've seen so many things about getting burns and things like that um and it's just not so like you know yes if you go to a practitioner that doesn't know what they're doing um and doesn't know how to deal with um skin of color yeah that could happen but if you're dealing with somebody who knows skin of color that's not gonna happen mm. you know so um those i would say are three myths that i get a lot mm. so black people go to black people to get your services <laughs> right. that's it that, that part that part right. but i literally had a chemical pill that was bad yeah yeah it burnt like literally like i did not want to go out for oh, weeks like no. it literally like 
tore like a whole i can show you pictures after this but Ooh. like a whole piece of my skin was like missing wow on like across my face mm-hmm. at that and like the healing process is so nasty yeah <laughs> because it's like a bruise almost mm-hmm. like it yeah. does look like a bruise yeah it, it was nasty and oh, it was like no. in the middle of my face wow and i've never like got a face shoe a chemical pill none of that wow. after that like i was oh, i was man. traumatized wow i was traumatized okay like, I was, like that's my that's yeah. my but at the same time I had a friend who got the same chemical mm-hmm. pill and it didn't do that to them. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it really depends. It does. Yeah. It does depend. It really depends. But those three myths make sense. So, okay, I guess my question is, right, I want to, all right, I want to get into all the beauty stuff, right? How do you feel like, because I feel like we have a beauty trend. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, we have beauty standards, but mm-hmm. they're trends, right? So, like, one one year it can be like everybody gotta have botox Mm -hmm. another year is like everybody gotta have bbls like how do you feel like things like that impact your your business hmm i think the trends do impact um the beauty business quite a bit but what i like to do is i don't really i don't really follow trends in my business like i follow things that actually make sense for my clients, like treatments that are going to be longstanding. I don't jump on every trend that I see on TikTok. You know, people send me things all the time like, oh, do you offer this? And I'm like, no. And then I explain to them like why I, it's not a good treatment. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh, OK, that makes sense. But a lot of times they'll see it on TikTok or they'll see it on Instagram. And I'm like, just because people are doing it doesn't mean it's a good procedure or a good treatment to Mm -hmm. do so i really am not big on trends but sometimes you know um i think for me i'm i'm big on educating on trends some of them are good you know a lot of them are not so Mm -hmm. i think really educating people and letting them know why the trend is good or bad you know helps a lot too so yeah what what are some trends you felt that you've seen and you're like oh i just hope we don't get into this uh, what was one I saw recently? And um, mm, let me think. Okay, so and this is not really a trend. This is just something that I saw recently. It it is kind of a trend. So plastic surgery, where you know, uh, women are like removing ribs and stuff like that to like get a smaller waist. That um, that's something that I just I I don't I don't get it. I don't understand it, and mm. I don't know why somebody would remove like part of you know your your rib just to get a smaller waistline like and and i feel like for me when i see things like that it's like a a bigger picture like what's going on with them emotionally or like you know internally that would make them compelled to do something like that like clearly they they feel like there's something wrong with them like real bad to do that you know and that it makes me feel sad because it's like you know wow you really think you you, you're that bad that you need to you know or your body's that bad that you have to remove your ribs like i just i don't know i i don't like that Mm. i don't like that at all and i also don't like i don't like a lot of um these filter trends so i get mm. a lot of that too like it's i get filter, a, filter trends so filter trends are like when i have clients who come in and they show me like a filter and they're like can you make my lips like this filter what or can you make my yeah like uh, you know or they want their face like that and i'm like it's a filter this is wait, not wait, a real wait, wait, person wait, wait. wait people want their face to be like to, to look Instagram. like a filter yes and i'm just they're like, controlling us yes that's yes. scary and that really bothers me that's especially scary. when i see like um younger clients who come in and and i'm just like they're just so misled and they they think that you know these people on instagram and stuff are like this how they really look and i'm like they don't that's a filter they got on they don't really look like that but and you want to look like that they don't even really look like that Mm. why would you want to look like that you know so do you do like lip injections and stuff like that i do okay so do okay how do you feel like how do you know when like somebody's coming in for like all right all right something like a bbl Mm -hmm. right how do you know somebody really could use a bbl or like it's more so like they're so caught up in like media or like things like that like well i would say a procedure like a bbl is all like for show like there's no medical reason somebody would need to get a bbl it's all like how they think they look or what they think they're lacking that would 
compel them to get a BBL. There's no other reason other than that, right? So it's completely superficial for something like a BBL, 100%. But for like clients who come in like for lip filler, let's say, you know, and they'll be like, oh, can you make my lips like Kim K lips or something like that? That's or, scary. you know, and I'm like, stop playing. Stop playing. You playing around too much. Like you want to do something. You want to make the money. You want to, you, you, you want to build wealth because it look cool, but you're not serious. Cause you know what I got, and I got something for you. The Blueprint for Investing, Volume One, created by me, Aaliyah Dua. It gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how to get started investing in the stock market. See, if you wanna really build wealth, you gotta put your money into things that's gonna work for you, right? Because the job money cool, but you wanna make the money work too, right? So it's gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide, investing tools, the apps to use, everything. And the best part is, I know you don't like to read, so I only made it 28 pages, that's it, right? 28 pages and you getting yourself some, some wealth of knowledge. So make sure y'all tune in, get your copy today and go to financialrevolution.com. Let's get it y'all, back to the episode. But you don't have a Kim K face. You have your face and you have your lips and so we can enhance your lips, but it's gonna look like your lips. It's yeah, not gonna look like, like Kim, Kim K's, K's lips. Yeah. And so I have clients who like insist sometimes or they're like, oh, I want very big lips so, and I'm like, we're not doing that like you know and i'm i'm that type of injector that i'm gonna i'm gonna turn you away I'm not <laughs> you're not dr do miami no i'm not gonna do <laughs> exactly. that like I, I i don't i don't because at the end of the day you're walking around with my work and mm, so very true you're my billboard basically very true. so i can't do something like that in, in a good conscience knowing that that doesn't look right on you you know what i mean mm. i'm not gonna do it and i turn clients away all the time for that like i'll be like you could go to another injector but i'm not going to do that wow. i'm not gonna do it wow. and that's a hard one too because it's like it's my business and this is how i make money but at the end of the day morals. i have to be able to sleep at night yeah morals you know? yeah no I, I feel like that's good morals i, I really feel like that's good morals because i feel like people will go to like Colombia and like all those Brazil mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. places where like you know they just want the money exactly you know they I'm don't saying? care and they don't like, really oh you care. want a big butt oh you want bigger I I got you yeah. you know they do yeah. not care and they're not gonna try to talk you out of yeah. it or nothing so what are some of the like pros and cons to some of these like um injections and I guess body changes so you know my thing is like I am very big on like enhancing your natural beauty. So some people, you know, um, as we age and things like that, your skin might start drooping and there's things that we can do to enhance it. There's fillers we can do in your cheeks, your, your laugh lines, things like that to just make you look a little bit more youthful, but keep your original face. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that's what I specialize in. That's what I'm big on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um, I don't really like those other uh services where you they just doing too much yeah you know i don't i don't i don't like that at all yeah so can so basically i'm asking like can your work be done on anybody is or is it like there's some people who is like oh you have this issue so you can't get like a lip injection or you have this so you can't Got get it. like a bbl like so there are times when you know for medical reasons you can't or you shouldn't get certain um, things done like people who have autoimmune disease you know they're not really great candidates for like Botox and things like that because when you inject something foreign into them sometimes their body attacks it that you know so there's there's different things um, and you you have to kind of know the the medical uh, you know diagnosis and things like that to be able to identify that in your clients um, but there definitely are times when people are not good candidates for stuff um, sometimes they still get it, you know, not by me, but sometimes <laughs> they still get it. Yeah. But yeah, there are definitely times when it wouldn't be appropriate for them because of whatever condition they may have. So, so is it technically like a risk every time you take a client? Yes. Wow. It is. It is definitely a risk. Um, you know, and that's something that also, you know, with, time and like learning your skill and perfecting your skill that risk becomes less and less but there's always still a risk when you're doing procedures like uh botox or injectables there's always a risk that something could go wrong you mm -hmm. know what i mean mm -hmm. um and that's where like proper training and proper education mm -hmm. come into play because you need to know what you're doing when you're dealing with someone in that way especially their face you know what i mean um and so training is super important Mm. tons and tons of training yeah. 
Okay, so just just to break some things down because I know there's a lot of I, I'm gonna have a lot of women watching the show, right? Um, so what is really happening when you get a BBL? Like, what is going into your body? And also, what's the all right? You have liquid BBL, mm-hmm. and then it's other types. Yes. And then also, what's the difference between like you doing like the fat transfer, like taking okay. fat from your body mm-hmm. and going? I know that was like a big question, but yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. So that's a great question actually, because we also we do liquid BBLs in the office. So and people ask that all the time. So a BBL or like a Brazilian butt lift is what it it stands for basically is a fat graft basically like you explained where you take fat from one part of your body it's usually done through liposuction um usually people will remove excess fat from their stomach or their back their arms or their thighs and the doctor will um basically like retrieve the the most healthy fat from whatever they extracted from the different parts of your body and they inject it into your butt and so basically um it instantly plumps up your booty um, and that's what a BBL is. Now, that <laughs> is a... <laughs> it's just crazy, man. I know, our producer is back there. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Crazy, man. So, that's a that's a surgical BBL. Um, and, you know, that is high risk also. There's a lot of possible complications with that. Um, it can get very scary. You know, a lot of people, like, they heard about that um, comedian whose wife died recently. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget yeah. his name now, um, but... You know who uh, I'm talking about. Yeah. I can't think of his name. Yeah. What's his name? DC Youngfly. DC Youngfly. Yeah, DC yes. Youngfly. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, his wife had a, a procedure, a plastic surgery procedure, and she ended up, you know, passing away. And it was very unfortunate. Um, so why would something like that happen? Like what? And that's the thing. It's like, from what I understand, it wasn't even related directly to the procedure. Like something else in her body happened while she was under. But going under anesthesia in itself is a risk. Really? And then, yes, and then getting up. Because when you go under anesthesia, it actually causes your respiratory system to decline. And that's why you have to have, like, an anesthesiologist there who's constantly monitoring your breathing to make sure you don't go too low to where you don't come back. Because you're not breathing. You'll you're, stop breathing. You're breathing, but your breathing goes down, like, all the way. It's not like a normal breathing pattern. Wow. Yep. So that is a risk. Anytime you go under anesthesia, it's a big risk in itself. And then actually getting the procedure done is another big risk. There's a lot of complications that can happen. You can get a fat embolism, which is where like uh, the fat from the transplant <clears throat> may get in your bloodstream, like a, a fat uh, molecule, and it can go in your bloodstream and get lodged somewhere, you know, in your heart or somewhere. Wow. And, you know, that can cause uh, really bad complications, if not death. So it's a very... Um, risky procedure and a lot of women do it and thank god you know um there's not more uh you know cases of like deaths but it is a very very it's one of the most high risk uh cosmetic procedures on the market more so than uh boob jobs or anything else like bbls is one of the most risky so how how much is like a bbl so and that's the next thing why a lot of people get it now too before like back in the day like a bbl was like 10 grand 15 grand 20 grand now you can get a bbl for like 3500 like it's like you know (laughs) that's cheap exactly (laughs) cheap you know so like a lot of women who probably couldn't afford it before and now they have like you know like um care credit and all these things you can do to like finance it too so you don't you even finance have to, you a BB- finance nah, a BBL. financing your butt not crazy first of all how about i saw the other day my assistant sent me a thing that they accept in klarna and after no, pay for bbl no that's yes. crazy that is crazy like, no after pay for a butt is crazy pay. girl <laughs> i said wait a minute like that's what crazy. is really happening here that's crazy wow yes. yep wow that's so, what happens when something becomes exactly it's, it's a business exactly it is wow. it's a it's a big business and wow. so you know the price dropped it's a lot of doctors who are offering it now so a lot more people are getting it but yeah so it's not that expensive anymore so what's the difference between like butt shots and a bbl so okay so and that's a good question too because a lot of people think that liquid bbl is butt shots and Mm -hmm. it's not so butt shots is an illegal procedure that people most of them were not even licensed who were injecting silicone and other substances that shouldn't be in your body into your butt to Mm. make it look like you had a bbl that's not 
proper and that's not safe at all and it's a lot of people like k michelle she had come out and she was talking about her butt shots and then she had to get it taken out like or try to get the silicone taken out it, which she couldn't but and i think it so once it's there, it's there yeah for... because it like in, it, it integrates with your body and your tissue and so you can't it's not like a silicone boob implant where like they could just take out the whole implant and leave you like that. Like the when they inject the silicone and the other substances, it goes all over your body. So wow. they can't just take it out in one like one, you know, lump sum. It, yeah. it goes all over. So they could take out as much as they can, wow. but it, it's, st it's still a lot of it that wow. stays in your body. So butt shots are not recommended. It's not legal. I don't recommend anybody getting butt shots, but a liquid BBL is the safer procedure to a surgical BBL. So liquid BBL, we do that in the office and it is um, like a non-surgical BBL. So we use um, substances like Sculptra or ADS, which are basically uh, biostimulators. And what those are is collagen producing substance. It's like a substance that we inject into the booty and it basically plumps up the fat in the area. So it takes your fat that's already in your booty and plumps it up to okay. make it look bigger. So it's not like a fat transfer because mm -hmm. we're not adding fat. You're um, just like using a, a BBL. fat that's there. Exactly. And we're basically fattening up the fat that's there already. Yeah. So that's a very safe procedure, much safer than a, a surgical BBL. BBL. Um, it's much more comfortable also because with a surgical BBL, you can't sit on your butt for like six to eight weeks. So <laughs> what you do? Girl, if you only knew what they be doing, they be like laying saw, down, they I be kneeling picture, down. I saw a picture you know, like with a whole bunch backwards. of girls. Like you, people usually go with their friends. I yeah. saw a picture with a whole bunch of girls like laying on a bed. Yes. Like, that, uh -huh. it look, it they looks... lay in the Uber like in the back seat and they got their legs up. It's just, it's a mess. It's <laughs> a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> nah. But yeah, so, so That's crazy. with liquid BBLs, you don't have to do that. You can sit on your butt right away. It's a very safe procedure. And a lot of clients have been opting to do that versus going under the knife and getting a surgical BBL because it is safer and it's more natural. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, like I said, pumping up the fat that's already there. So how, how long does that take? Like um in the office it takes about like maybe an hour to an hour and a half wow. for that procedure an hour and your mm -hmm. butt could be bigger i'm telling you and you're <laughs> wow. awake, you One know hour. it's a very it's a comfortable procedure like you know our clients usually like reading a book or on their phone or something while i'm doing it and it's you know it's good and it's uh -huh. it's a good procedure for those but but it, the thing with the liquid bbl it doesn't give you like a big big butt like a yeah. like a surgical bbl yeah. would it gives you like a little plump a little bit more like a, a more natural plump so it was sh it would shape your butt too exactly okay. exactly like it, it would shape it more but it's not going to give you like that big donkey mm. booty like yeah. a you know surgical bbl yeah. would and a lot of people don't want that anymore yeah. anyways so so is it possible for you to I don't know if unliquid is a word, but yeah. like if you want to get rid of the liquid BBL. So with the liquid BBL, over time, the substance does, your body does reabsorb the substance. So it does go away. Oh, so you, time. you have to mm -hmm. like do it. It would take, it takes about like two years for it to fully go away out of okay. your body. And then they could redo it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. <laughs> he's fiending like, he's fiending so at That's what hilarious. age do you feel like people should make like these decisions with their body whether or not it's like a liquid bbl or you know a surgical bbl or just any type of like surgery or any enhancement to right. your body because they usually say that when you're young you shouldn't do the stuff because your body's still growing and mm -hmm. still changing so what age like i i kind of agree with that you know that's one of those things that i I fight with all the time because I have younger clients who come in who are like between 18 and 21, even 25, I would say. And they want certain things done. And first of all, I'm like, you're gorgeous. Like, what can you possibly want to fix, you know? But these are things that really bother them. So it's like for for my younger clients, I usually have like two consultations with them because I need to understand like what they want done first and then I need to understand why they want to do it. And I usually have them done like the consultations like six weeks apart to give them time to think about yeah. it and to give me time to think about it too. And then we come back, reassess the situation and see if it's really like Worth feasible it, or yeah. if it really makes sense yeah. for them, you know? And again, if I feel like they're just strictly doing it just for sheer vanity and that's it, 
most of the times I turn them away. But if it's something like that's making them super self-conscious to the point where, you know, they don't want to go out and speak in public because like they feel like, you know, there's something is wrong with their face or whatever the case may be, then, you know, I would entertain it. But, mm-hmm. you know, to, so to answer your question, there's not really any right or wrong age, but I do typically uh, try to encourage my younger clients to find other ways other than like, you know, doing these enhancements so mm-hmm. young because the thing about it is once you start you kind of have to continue it right mm. so it's not like a one-time thing yeah so you start getting lip injections or you know getting you know plumper lips you got to keep doing that now to keep it up for the rest of your life yeah. so do you really want to start that at 18 yeah. like you know what i mean yeah. so wow. that's something to think about wow. and how so how much are like lip injections so lip injections can range depending on the product being used and depending on the provider, but it can range anywhere from, I want to say like six hundred to twelve hundred dollars. That's not expensive, but it's just like I don't, I don't know. I, I can really see how like when people are fighting like mm-hmm. issues, like six hundred dollars to fix right. the issue is not bad. So right. I, I can see. So I'm not even gonna say anything. I can see. Um. Wow. This 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 makes sense. I, <laughs> He he came up with some of these questions. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted to know. <laughs> you know, but I was I was curious though because I feel like a lot of times like we just see these things happening and we see a lot of trends and I feel like because we have this beauty standard, mm-hmm. um, a lot of times as young people we try to just live up to those standards. Yes. And it's it's so scary because those st- those standards could change at any moment. So exactly. now you done spent all this money mm-hmm. getting a BBL or in- injecting your lips and then mm-hmm. A year later, everybody can be like, we're not doing this anymore. Exactly. If you're doing this, mm-hmm. like, you're weird. If you have yeah. this, you're weird. And now you're stuck. Correct. With something that mm-hmm. you spent all your money, you spent time, exactly. effort. Exactly. And now it's not even validated no exactly. more. So now you're insecure about that. Mm-hmm. And you're insecure about the fact that you can't change it. And it happens to people all the time. So yes. it's really, really, really scary. Really mm-hmm. scary. Right? So what so teeth whitening right because we're going to film me doing a teeth yes. whitening and things like that right so we could put that on here um what is really happening when you get to teeth whitening so i love teeth whitening honestly it's one of the first um services that i offered at my spa and you know um what happens during teeth whitening basically is so our teeth are bones and mm-hmm. they have like pores in it right mm-hmm. so they have holes in them and so a lot of people think like when you um when your teeth are yellow it's like the hard part like that the hard part of your mm-hmm. teeth that's yellow but really it's not so it's the inside of our teeth that are yellowing mm-hmm. uh, which is the dentin layer so the enamel is the hard part and the dentin is the the inner layer and what happens is as we eat foods and drink stuff that are staining to our teeth it goes in those little holes those little pores in our teeth and it settles in our dentin layer and it stains that layer mm. um not the outside that's why some people are like oh i'll be brushing my teeth really hard and like it's not getting whiter i use charcoal toothpaste or whatever you know superficial stuff mm. and it doesn't get whiter so when we do teeth whitening we apply a hydrogen peroxide gel which is a, a lightening agent um to your teeth and then we use a special light to actually activate that gel so what that does is it causes the gel to go inside of those pores in your teeth Mm -hmm. and whiten your teeth from the inside out and that's how teeth whitening actually happens okay so how do i get my teeth white where like i I cheese and it goes ting (laughs) like it it got the sound (laughs) Well, I mean, well, the easiest thing you could do is get a, a, a tooth gem. That's a different story, but you can get a tooth gem. No, I, we I, talked I, about that no, last time, No, I can't too. get a tooth gem. Like, I, I can't. I don't know. I feel like it's not for me. It's not for me. It's not for you. Well, that's going to give you a bling. But I would say, honestly... Um, I want the bling without the sound. You want the bling without the... Okay. <laughs> without the sound. <laughs> but I want I want to smile. Literally, when you wiped my teeth the last time, I walked in my gosh, the shop, she said... Some, you, you did something different. Your teeth white? Your wow. Teeth? No, she, she saw she the difference. right away. I feel like she was trying to tell me my mm. teeth was real wow. yellow before. That That's was crazy. But, <laughs> right. but, no, but yeah, it really, it really did change. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, and I also uh, use Hello. Okay. Hello as, mm-hmm. like, my whitening mm-hmm. toothpaste. But, yeah, I just feel like once I got my braces. Yeah. That, like, whatever glue they put, mm-hmm. because I didn't get a white... Uh, whitening right after mm-hmm. I waited like my first whitening from when I got my braces I was, remember was yeah you, uh-huh. right and that's like a year and a half right. two years later so I feel like that glue like stuck mm-hmm. to my teeth like so 
I don't know, but I want the like it's, it's different levels to like whitening. There like, is there's different levels. So we have standard whitening and we have advanced. So I would definitely say you should do advanced, and we can actually do multiple sessions. So okay. um, t teeth whitening is recommended um every like six months to a year, but you it's also safe to do every um twenty eight days. So for clients who come in who want teeth whitening and they like the results, but they feel like they can get whiter, you can actually come back a month later and do a, a top up session to get whiter. Like oh, we've had okay. clients who we got from like, like the middle of the tooth shade guide all the way to like the whitest of the like they they were like paper white, like a Whoa. white sheet that's, of paper white. That's what I want. That's, that's, what, that's okay. what I want. That's what I want. I want. Ting. Right. Like you see right. my teeth. Right. Chris. <laughs> Chris. That's got what I'm it. talking about. Copy. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want. Okay. Yeah, that's what I want. So we we gonna we gonna work on that process. Yeah, we gonna work on that process. Absolutely. Yeah, especially because like I do a lot of public speaking mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and I feel like teeth are like really like it's thing. yeah, it's, it's really important. really important, you know. So I I want that. So Definitely. we gonna we gonna work on that. So I'm glad you broke down like what's really happening yeah. because. Like I really do be scrubbing my teeth hard, mm -hmm. and I brush my teeth night and right. day, and I try to lay lay off on the candy a mm -hmm. little bit, and it still just be yeah. like, mm -hmm. like, well, because you got to remember, like as we eat stuff throughout the day and drink stuff, it's gonna restain our teeth, even if you get teeth whitening. So that's why I tell people too, like if you drink a lot of like dark sodas or like you know red wine or whatever, like if you or you eat stuff that's like a lot of like high pigments, like berries and stuff that have a lot of dyes in them even if it's natural dyes but still those are going to cause more yeah. stains to your teeth yeah. so for those people who eat a lot of things like that i recommend teeth whitening on a more regular basis to keep your your smile white makes sense makes sense all right so now we're just going to get some games to the people who want to open up their own spa business okay. right what are three things that they should know for i would say three things for people starting out and then we'll go to three things for people who operate a spa business okay so three things for somebody starting out one you should pick a niche right because when i started out i like i told you i went down the rabbit hole and i was just doing like all these different training courses and then when i did open my spa i wanted to offer everything which even now i still offer a lot of stuff like people see my service menu they're like yo you offer mad stuff <laughs> yeah. which i i do but i would say in the beginning for somebody it's very overwhelming that way like it was overwhelming for me and in hindsight i probably shouldn't have done it like that i would recommend picking one thing and mm -hmm. starting there getting very good at it and then offering that and then adding on other services Makes as sense. you go that's um one thing um also for somebody starting out uh, a new spa business make sure you get the proper training for whatever it is you want to offer you know make sure you're getting trained by someone who's credible who knows what they're talking about because that's going to determine your success too you know if you get half you know halfway training or you know training that's not good it's going to affect your performance and how you service your clients and that's going to also affect your revenue at the end of the day so you want to make sure you get trained by you know someone who's reputable who knows what they're talking about mm -hmm. and three i would say you have to actually um start before you start so and what i mean by that is like there's things that need to be in place so when you start you're not just sitting there like with crickets you know yeah. like you should have a social media up and running um before you even start start your business because uh, you have to get the word out. Like, people are not going to know. You could have the best, biggest, most beautiful spa in the world, but if you're not marketing and, you know, promoting your business, nobody's going to know it exists. But, but what, are you, what if you are? Because I, I have friends who have spa businesses, and mm. I see them post all the time. Well, it's what they're posting and who mm. they're posting to also. Mm. You know, because, and somebody was saying that the other day too, like, a lot of people, like, they have, like, a business page, um, like, they might start or whatever, let's say on Instagram or Facebook, or whatever and a lot of the people that follow them are people who like they knew from before they yeah. had like their business you know and those are not your audience those That's are not your, exactly yeah. those are just people yeah. that you know so you actually have to start like really going through your contact list and seeing like who could be a potential client yeah. and 
start targeting them, not just random people. Like, yeah, it looks good to have a certain amount of followers and this and that. But if them followers are not bringing revenue to your business or bringing income to you, then what is even the purpose? Yeah. You know, you have 10K followers and all of them are your friends from high school. And <laughs> not one of them came and got a service from you. Like, what is really the That's purpose? A fact. You know That's what I mean? Fact. So you got to really target those people. And also, sometimes like when you're starting out, like literally look in your phone, look in your phone. You can find your first five to 10 clients just by your contact list. You can find them just by people you so, know. So so how do you keep them coming though? So well, like how do you how do you know? Like I feel like that's the thing about entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. right? I can have one hundred clients this mm-hmm. month. How do I keep it on a regiment where I have a hundred consistent clients? Then I turn that hundred and one fifty like so that's where systems come in place and this is for someone who would already have a business in place or even somebody who's starting out but i would say if you already started um and you kind of have some you know generating some income and you already got a little flow going that's when you have to get systems in place you have to have systems so you can um duplicate what you did the month before Mm. you know so you have to like have things like email marketing text message marketing you have to have um you know uh, some well you don't have to have somebody but you have to understand how like um ads work and how to boost posts and like what to say and how to say it and like what hashtags to use and you know you have to understand those things as well and that's how you consistently um you know get clients in addition to like i would say doing incentives for your current clients you know let them do the work for you like we have a referral program you know at my spot and basically our current clients who refer new clients, they get a discount, they get 20% off their next service, Probably. and then the person that they refer get 10% off their first service. Mm, so it's a win-win for yeah. both parties involved, and we get a ton of referrals like that. You know, so that's like uh, one way to continuously have, um, you know, uh, new money coming in Mm. and, you know, just doing quality work. Because, you know, sometimes you can have the best marketing, you can have the best Instagram page, but sometimes your work really is not that good. Mm. So really making sure like you're doing the thing good first before you start putting it out there that's that's important too you know you can't just be doing halfway stuff that's definitely (laughs) you know so your first location was in brooklyn Mm -hmm. right how did you know it was time for you to get a second location like you know um that that was quick if you you started in 2019 right 2020 the pandemic hit right so then you had to stop you got back and then we're in 2023 you got two locations right like that's quick right and (laughs) yeah that's true and so the my manhattan office has been open for a year now because we opened that in 2022 and you got it in the city yes in the city (laughs) but you know what what when i felt like i knew i needed to have another location is when enough of my clients started complaining that they were traveling too far Mm. like Mm. I was having people coming from like all over the place from New Jersey, from upstate, from Connecticut, yeah. like uh, Westchester, like far up. And I was like, wow, OK, Harlem, the Bronx. And I'm like, well, Brooklyn is a little truck for these people. Yeah. And I <laughs> yeah. was like, dang, you know, and I was like, I need a more central location. And that's where Manhattan really came into play, because I'm like, I have to have a more central location that way people from Brooklyn can get to it. And people from like uptown, further up, New Jersey even can get to it, too. So that's really what like pushed me into it, you know, into getting another location. So how do you find staff for both locations? It's hard. Mm. <laughs> it's what, hard. What, 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 so you go to like estheticians? Like what do you, what do you Yeah. Do? So usually um, I've been fortunate enough to like basically get like organic referrals, like people that I know, like your mom has referred um, one of my estheticians that work for me now. She um, said she need, um, she need a face shoe so she could look young again. To tell I you know. That. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting. She, she been traveling a lot, but she, she, I do a special facial for her when she comes in. Last time she was here, I wasn't here. So we yeah. missed each other, but yeah, I got her next time she, mm-hmm. she's in town, but yeah, so I've, it's kind of been organic so far. And that also kind of scares me because like, I really have been blessed to not have to go through that regular hiring process. Mm-hmm. And that worries me. Like all of my staff came through like a referral of somebody else that I know. So they were already kind of pre-vetted mm-hmm. and, and I kind of like it that way, yeah. you know, but like getting somebody like 
that I don't know at all, like just from a resume receiving and looking at them, like I don't know, like that's kind of scary for me. Mm, yeah, that's kind of scary. I see, I see. Yeah. So you don't do you hire like interns or? Yeah. So this year I hired my first um, intern. It wasn't even like um, it was through uh, summer youth actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so um, we registered to be like a summer youth participant, and it was so dope because it was like I felt it was like so full circle because the young lady that we had actually she was a senior in high school mm. and guess what she wanted to go to cosmetology school wow. so it was like a perfect place uh, for her, place for her. Yeah. and it was like so awesome mm. seeing her like you know in that element and like learning things and stuff like that and it really it really made me feel like i want to do more for the youth and i'm working mm. on that too yeah. i'm working on um a program in the school system to where i can bring these like beauty trainings like so, not like advanced stuff but like at least the basic stuff yeah to the youth who don't want to take the traditional path of like you know going to college and yeah. stuff like that because let's face it it's not for everybody you know yeah. and i'm okay with that you know like college is not for everybody and there's definitely a lot of ways to make money and as long as you find something that you're interested in you can turn that into you know uh revenue you just yeah. gotta figure out how to how to make it work for you but it doesn't have to be traditional college you no. know that's that's definitely a fact like that's actually one of the things I'm working on, building, like, an empire with mm -hmm. the schools. So right now I have, like, financial literacy, college career, nice. right, and things like that. So now, like, adding more. So mm -hmm. I created a program called Future Billionaire Program. And oh, under, wow. underneath that program is cosmetology and beauty really? and things like that. Yeah, because nice. at the end of the day, like, the money is cool, but, like, you got to do something to get the money, Correct. right? And do something that you enjoy. Absolutely. Do something that you love. And it's a lot of people who love, you know the uh beauty industry is exactly. a lot you know what i'm saying like i feel like that's the thing for girls mm -hmm. you know yeah. uh, e even men too yeah. as well mm -hmm. um but out there yeah yeah you know what i'm saying kind of and like the same way that a lot of young men like you know sports mm -hmm. and things like that or they want to go into like designing t-shirts right. and stuff like that right so it's just like finding a space where they can come and they have access to all types of information and all right. types of networks you know things like that so yeah I definitely love that. gonna add you to the network definitely <laughs> yeah. add me to the network definitely, i would definitely, love that yeah. Yes, yes. But as we wrap up, I appreciate all the information you've been of given. Course. I learned a lot because, like, I feel like, yes, my mom is in the beauty industry. But mm -hmm. you know when, like, your parents are doing something, it's like, it's that's, my mom. Exactly. Yeah, that's my mom's job. Right. <laughs> you it's know not what I'm saying? Same. So I, I picked up <laughs> on a few things from her. But mm -hmm. um, just learning, like, what the medical part of yeah. things and just the education behind it really makes a lot of sense. But as we close out, we have our last few segment, segments. Um, this segment is called the Talk It Is segment, right? Okay. So it's two parts to it. One part is uh, you can speak to any time you felt down, any time somebody ever doubted you, whatever. I know we talked about that earlier, mm -hmm. but, like, this is your Talk It Ish moment, your, your moment to just say what you want. Okay. Like, you know. What I would say to everybody out there who um, – is watching this and who you know is thinking about maybe starting a business or even a little side hustle right i would say really like imposter syndrome like don't don't let it succumb don't, don't get succumbed by that because it is really really it can get in your head and it can really really affect your ability to function and to thrive and to get to the next level in whatever you're trying to do so really just stay 10 toes down stay grounded you know keep positive people around you and if you hear that little voice in your head telling you you can't do it just knock it out knock it out knock it all the way out you know what i mean if you have to curse at it sometimes i have to curse at that little voice yeah. in my head and do be what like, you gotta do out of here like yeah. i am gonna do it i don't care what you what you're trying to tell me i can't do like i'm gonna do it and sometimes you have to do that you have to really like curse that voice out because it, sometimes it gets so loud that that's all you hear and that's when you know things can start going south so i would say just ignore it ignore it and just keep pushing forward yes that, that was good thank you thank you for that um and it also was something that you're really really passionate about i'm really which is crazy that we were just talking about i'm really really passionate about the youth honestly mm. because i feel like that is the future right and so it's super important for me to be a good role model and to also use my gifts and my talents to bring up the next generation and make sure that they're good and also to show them like different things than what I was taught growing up you know like when I was growing up I was taught that a nine to five is the way to go that you got to work 
and 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 save for your pension yeah. and like you know you got to retire at 65 or 75 whatever it is now it's, it's high whatever the mm-hmm. age is and you know like that was it like you know that's all you have to to live for and there's just so much more yeah. there's so much more to life and there's so much more that you can do and you know don't ever like limit yourself like literally and it may sound cliche but literally the sky is the limit like things that i'm doing now in my life was only like a, a faint like vision like mm-hmm. years ago and now it's like coming to pass because yeah. it's like I put in the work and I've been dedicated and now I can see, you know, the fruits of my labor and, you know, you can too. You just have to stay with it. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. And the last question is, what's a lyric about business or money that like when you hear it, (laughs) it boosts your spirit, gets you in your bag and make you want to go work, go do something, go, you know? Well... It's two that I always that I always think about. I think about Biggie when he said more money, more problems. Yes. That's a fact. Cause yes. That is, you know, money does cause more problems to an extent. It can solve problems too, but it causes more problems. Fact. And then my hype song definitely is Rick Ross, Every Day I'm Hustling. <laughs> Every that, day that's I'm my, hustling. Sometimes yeah. I play that in the yeah. morning on my way to work just yeah. to like get in my, yeah. you in know. Your bag. Yeah. 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 You gotta that's get it. in your mode. You gotta mm-hmm. get in your mode. So I appreciate you for coming on the platform. Yes. This has been a great episode. Like I know the people going to tune in. Where can the people find you? Where's your store located? So we have two offices, um, one in Brooklyn um, and one in Midtown. Um, all the information is on the website. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, um, YouTube at Lux Beauty Bar NYC on all platforms. Um, we would love to connect and hear from you all. Yeah, make sure y'all go get y'all teeth whitening. Definitely. Make sure y'all go get y'all lip injections. Yes. Make sure y'all go get y'all liquid BBLs and what else do you offer? Facials, everything. massages, waxes, laser hair removal, laser hair everything. Remo- Eyelash hydration, extension, everything. 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 Make sure y'all go get it and tune in. Let's get it, y'all. Yes. <laughs>